Okay. Thank you all for coming, by the way. Absolutely. So I remember when I was in elementary school, we read this book called The Great Coffee Tree. It's a children's picture book about rainforest conservation. Two men um, walked into the rainforest with the intention of cutting down trees. One left for home while the other fell asleep in the forest. Then animals started climbing down from the tree, and they started to, exp to explain to the man why they depended so much on the trees. When the man woke up, he no longer wanted to cut down the trees and went home. What stuck with me after all these years was not the story, but it was the statistics at the end of it. It said that the rainforests were being cut down at an alarming rate, and we had about 50 years before all rainforests were wiped out. No more rainforests meant less air for us to breathe and a harder world to live in. This terrified me, a six-year-old, who still believed in rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> but my teacher assured me that this book, which came out in 1990, by the way, was made a long, long time ago. Conversation had reduced a lot since that time, and the effects of cutting down the trees weren't going to be prominent for a long time after. Well, on October 8th, 2018, a report by the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said that we have 12 years to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere before worse droughts, floods, extreme heat, and poverty come into play. I'm sure you've all heard this spiel 100 times before, but here's 101. Our biggest problem facing climate change right now is the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. Um, too much carbon dioxide is causing the greenhouse effect. Large amounts of CO2 particles in the air creates a cover that keeps the sun's heat energy in the atmospheric bubble that surrounds the Earth. Here's some data on this chart from climate.nasa.com. It shows the CO2, the car carbon dioxide level has not been over 300 million CO2 particles in the last 400,000 years, but in 1950 was the first time I went over, where you're currently at 400 million particles. The only way to reduce this is by recycling. Recycling helps reduce pollution caused by landfill sites, which release harmful chemicals and greenhouse gases. Here are some statistics from greenlivinglovetoknow.com. 21% of the landfill sites is food, 14% paper, 10% rubber, leather, and textiles, and 18% are plastic, all of which can be recycled. For my first two years at River Bluff, we had re recycling, but this year I came to learn that we now only have two recycling bins in the entire school. I assumed that this was due to um, administration decision at River Bluff, but I talked to Ms. Regina Batson, a greenhouse debt monitor and member of the Environmental Education Association of South Carolina. She clarified that just the district office controls recycling and waste management. And the reason why we no longer have recycling is because they did not renew their contract with the recycling vendor because they no longer thought it was a priority. But other schools, other districts around us, like Lexington, Richland 5, Irmo and Champion schools, Richland 1 and 2, private schools, all have recycling programs. But one of the most progressive districts in the state of South Carolina, Lexington 1, doesn't. It's interesting. I, I understand that this is a district problem and not a River Bluff problem, but as you can tell, I'm a River Bluff student, so I can only speak on our behalf. A few days ago, I sent out an email to um, teachers and staff at River Bluff at, asking their opinions on recycling. Those that replied said that 91% believe recycling is important, 92% believe it is important for students to recycle, and 88% want recycling back at River Bluff. Our school's mission statement is support students and teachers and all of whom they influence collectively in their pursuit of excellence within a collaborative learning culture, engaging in it, graduating citizen scholars committed to building a better world. How are we expected to build a better world when there might not be a world to build? We learn in crew, we learn our school's core values, which are excellence, growth mindset, personal responsibility. Did I say growth mindset? Let me start over. Growth mindset, personal responsibility, excellence. What am I forgetting? I know citizenship, but I'm getting to that. But you guys all yeah. know. Yeah. Um, 
but most importantly, citizenship. And while doing service or houses scholarship evidence logs, a big point that students put for citizenship is LNTing or leaving no trace. They'll say, oh, I picked up trash and threw it away. It's almost comedical how much they use that as an example. Even our next career project for juniors is making outfits out of recycled goods. So why does our school focus so much on community recycling and not have a recycling program? High school teaches us a lot of good habits, like organization, time management, amongst other things. So why not make recycling one of those habits? Having an option for students to recycle in class creates, and having teachers remind them creates a habit that not only withstands the classroom, but into their everyday lives. I think the CMA EcoCycle Australia's most experienced mercury and recovery and recycling company said it best. Whether it's batteries or bottles, paper cans or school recycling programs demonstrate the power of multiplication. They show that when many people combine their small actions, big things are accomplished. Thank you.